It's the FSN Rewind, where tonight's matchup was the Annandale Adams and the Lake Braddock Bruins. I'm Dave McHugh alongside Ryan Sakamoto. Let's check out the highlights from this one. And Lake Braddock certainly looked good early, hitting Jung Yu early on this one. Nearly breaks this one open for a touchdown, gets down to the 20. You might sense this play later in this game a few times. They were able to cap off this 63-yard drive with a Hoskins three-yard touchdown, putting them up 7-0. Annandale would try to respond right back the other direction, this time off the Schwartz naked bootleg for 15 yards, but the defense would step up for Lake Braddock. It really did, and this front line got a ton of push in the first half and it really threatened to shift momentum. Now you see the push, and solid player for Lake Braddock, number 42. Uh, Caleb McCoy had a heck of a game. Here's another run. This is O'Brien who early on fumbled the ball in his first carry. That would fall into the hands of Annandale. And quickly they would be in business at the 41-yard line. And they would cap off the 41-yard drive with this nice run from Walton from three yards out. But they would miss the extra point, And that would be key in this one. And they were up down 7-6. Then down the field, you see this one again. You in the slot up the middle gets the opportunity, nearly gets a touchdown, dropped at the two-yard line. But that would set up O'Brien. Nice sportsmanship there at the end of the game. O'Brien makes up for his fumble here, Ryan. And he absolutely does. And again, that play sets up this O'Brien run. And, and again, Lake Braddock really starting to kind of take that momentum early. That capped a 64-yard drive. This one, nice pass up to him. Aramis Alexander nearly dropped it, but held on to the ball. That would set up the touchdown here from Henderson. Scampers in, he gets the score, capping an 80-yard drive. It was 22 to six. Lake Braddock in control, and seemingly, after this play, looking to blow out the game in the second quarter. The interception by Coulter, it would come back, though, because of blocking it back, so instead of first down and goal from the three, they were set up at about the 21. Absolutely, but that interception right there sets it up about to, uh, what well, looked like it could have made the score a three touchdown difference. Look through this pass to Ramos Alexander, tips it, and then intercepted by Annandale's number 12, Matt Stevens, a heck of an effort by Stevens. Alexander would be snake bit a few times in this game, but he would make up for it later. On the very next play from the line of scrimmage, Walton would find all parts of the field, including getting a terrific block from Fonte Canoe. He ran down about 45 yards, probably ran a total of 100 on that play. And Annandale was in business, and they would cap off the drive, canning it to Walton. He scored his second touchdown from five yards out, capping the 80-yard drive. And again, a 14-point swing there, as you see Walton able to go in there for his third third touchdown of the day. That would start the second half, a one-yard touchdown, and all of a sudden they have un rattled off 13 unanswered points but missed yet another kick. The interception here, this would be costly for Lake Braddock as they're trying to keep control of the game. Annandale now in charge. Down three, and Johnson would get the ball to start the fourth quarter and scamper in from 10 yards out. The longest touchdown play for either team in this one, putting... Annandale up 25-22, but they would mi miss yet another missed kick for the extra point. That was the third miss. And then see it again. Up the slot. Henderson to you, this time for 68 yards, capping a 92-yard drive. And Lake Braddock would lead 29-25. And another nice display of sportsmanship afterward. But this would be Annandale's last chance. Schwartz gets hit on the play, and that's where Ramos Alexander makes up for a couple of the uh, snake bit plays early on, picks off the interception, and Lake Braddock holds on after rallying to win 29-25 over Annandale. And after the game, Ryan caught up with our coach, winning coach and CCI screen printing player of the game, Dave, thank you very much. I'm down here on the sideline with head coach Jim Poitras. Jim, just first of all, talk about just getting the first win. How big of a relief that is? Well, I mean, a bad win is better, better than a, a good loss, right? So we'll take the win however we can get it, and it does relieve some pressure. I don't know how I'd feel if I was going home 0-2 to tonight. Sure, and you talk about um, some, some certainly some miscues there. A lot of penalties here tonight kind of racked up. But just talk about you guys, um, the ability to kind of come back, to rebound from that, and then to just get that scoring drive at the end. Well, I thought it showed some character about our football team. We're a very young team, and I think that we could go pretty far if we could continue to improve. You know, I didn't get the improvement I wanted from week one to week two, but the kids battled through the adversity, fought back, played the whole time, and we got out with a win, so we're happy. 
Absolutely. Thank you very much, Coach. And now with our player of the game, we have Caleb Henderson. Caleb, just talk us through the first half. You guys looked like you were kind of building momentum, looked like you had a chance to break the game open, and then Annandale kind of came back into it. Sure. Uh, yeah, well, Annandale's a great team. Uh, we definitely had momentum going uh, through the second half, but or going through the first half, but um, I definitely thought uh, we knew what we were doing the entire game, and I never really lost uh, hope into my team, so my team played a great game. And you say that, but Annandale comes back, takes the lead early in the uh, fourth quarter. Just talk about and you didn't really see a lot of the field in the third. Was there any kind of tenseness on the sideline just waiting for your chance again? No, there's no tenseness. We all know what we can do. We know we're a great offense and great offensive score, so we weren't worried at all. And again, just talk us through that very last touchdown play for you guys, the one that put you in the lead. Uh, you found Zhang Yu. It was a very similar play to what you guys had had earlier in the game where he almost broke a touchdown. Just talk us through that play. Uh, Zhang, Zhang's a great player. Uh, he's so he's so quick. We call him the quickest kid on our team. Um, it was it was just a great run by him. I just put it where he could go make me look good. So he, he made me look good. And again, just how does it feel to get the first win of the season out of the way? Feels great, but we can't we can't keep winning like this. We gotta we gotta play to our potential, and we definitely didn't tonight. So, well, guys, congratulations on the win. And again, Lake Braddock with a 29 to 25 victory over Annandale tonight. And Dave, back to you. Thank you. Another key part of this game, penalties. Lake Braddock, 16 for 140 yards. Annandale, 10 for 70. Made a big difference in this game, certainly slowing it down, but also nearly costing Lake Braddock the victory. Again, the final score, Annandale, or Lake Braddock over Annandale, 29 to 25. Thanks again for joining us here on the FSN Rewind.